Bulasia and welcome to the Just Peace Talano Ambure at COVID-19. And here with us, uh, Andy Wanganitonga Masivue, the representative of young women and students here in the North, and Andy Makitalena, the president of the multiracial women's group uh, from Nalemba, Madhuwata, Jaina Silasila, the president of the Northern Youth with Disability, and uh, also the program director for Transcend Oceania, Paolo Mbalena Korondawa, who will be moderating this uh, segment for us. Mia Sambulare, and uh, welcome to this uh, episode. Jaina Silasila, Andy Makitalena, and Andy Wanganitonga. Thank you for your willingness to be uh, part of this. Um, and I'm sure you have uh, lots of interesting stories and experiences uh, you will share with us and the viewers who are watching uh, tonight. To begin with, uh, can you tell us a, a little bit about yourself? So we begin with Jay and we just continue the conversation right over to the other side of the row. Thank you. My name is Jane Silasila and I'm representing uh, the Northern Youth with Disability and Support Association, a network of young people with disability in the Northern Division. My name is Andy Magdalena and I'm the president of Nalemba Multiracial Women's Group. Thank you. My name is uh, Andy Wanganitonga. I am a young woman from Langi, Dongotoki, Maduat. Thank you. Thank you. Um, lots of things have uh, happened um, in our lives uh, and particularly in the recent months uh, with regards to COVID-19. Uh, lots of things have happened in the Northern Division. In your lives as leaders, as a person living with disability and as women leaders, can you share with us and the viewers watching tonight some of your experiences um, and um, so what are the issues of priorities for you at the moment? Thank you. Um, for us persons living with disabilities, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has really um, changed our lifestyle, the way we live our life uh, before and now. Uh, the restriction of movement has really affected uh, our movements as of who we are in different spaces, access to health services. We feel that um, um, we are living in a new uh, norm whereby uh, we have to think and be strategic in what we do um, and uh, knowing the fact that COVID-19 is around and uh, we, we want to take care of ourselves as we don't want to be one of the victims. Um, with that being said, the recent uh, uh, COVID-19 a pandemic has, uh, for me, as a person living with disability living in Lambasa, um, I would say that um, um, me being staying alone at home, uh, the lockdown has uh, changed the way I do things. Mm -hmm. I have to uh, prioritize what's uh, important and uh, to do things that I feel it's much more important than others. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jay. Andy Makitalena, what are some of your experiences and some of your priority issues as a, as a woman and as a woman leader? Benak, as a woman leader, mm. from that uh, issues of priorities from 2019 to 2020, uh, for the climate change, um, the flooding was affected in our area, in our community, and as we are farmers, sugarcane farmers, livestock farming, um, uh, been washed away, the chemicals and the manures, and uh, at least we don't have money to replace all these things. And uh, as the COVID-19 came, it made um, everybody panic because it's new to us what is happening. Right from the small uh, children, they are frightened for the policemen to come when they had the policemen roaming around in the community rather than when something happened in the community when we call the police and uh, they respond that there is no transport and for this reason for this crisis happen the police they're moving around in all direction in the community and um, it's like uh, 
in the community they are not suffering from any sickness like COVID-19, especially it's away from town area. And so for me, I shared that these people can be the carrier to the community, for the community, because they are coming from town to the community. So they can be the carrier, because there is a lot of barrier there, the communication is not uh, um, uh, down to the community. So they can be the one who carry the COVID-19 to the community. Thank you. Adi Wangani Tonga, as a young woman, and I understand you were still studying, that yes. COVID-19 and its impact left no one behind. Thank you. Everybody is affected. Yeah. What were some of your experiences and some of the key priority issues for you as a young woman? Um, thank you. First of all, I'm still a year 13 school student and my priority issues are all about education now. So it has been three months, still there are no education. And for me, as a year 13 student, it is very critical because it is my last year. I have um, targets to achieve. Um, attain high level of education for me is a great priority for me right now. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, you were watching Transcend Oceania, Justice Talanoa, Bure at COVID-19. We will take a break now. Join us in the next segment. Welcome to this um, second segment of Women's Innovation in the Northern Division. Perhaps we can continue the Talanoa. You have spoken about some of your experiences um, and some of the priority issues in the last segment. Perhaps for this round, can we ask you to talk about how you and your community responded to the challenges of COVID-19. How did you cope during this time? Jay. How did you cope during COVID-19? Uh, firstly, um, since uh, the information about COVID-19 was all flooding the social media, I at some stage um, chose not to go online for some moment and also switch off my um, TV so that it allows, gives me time for me to um, to rest because I feel, I feel of uh, hearing all these uh, uh, updates and what happenings around uh, the world and in Fiji. It makes me, um, it's affect me I, psychologically, like I feel it's really affect me psychologically so I feel that uh, that's how I would go just to uh, ch tune down my, um, my me tuning into other platform, eh? media mm -hmm. platform, yeah. And uh, just uh, since we were just uh, home, mm -hmm. uh, doing other house chores mm -hmm. and uh, just to make myself busy. And uh, the past uh, months, I was able to do things that I, I, I had never done before. Um, I was weaving, I was uh, doing some house chores here. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Jay. Andy Magdalena, I understand you are the president of a multicultural uh, women's group that's composed of Itaoki women and Indo Fijian women. In your experience with the, the women in Nalemba, how, what did you find as a way of women coping with the impacts of COVID-19? How did they cope during that time up until now? Look, uh, mostly women are the first responders. Mm -hmm. So mostly uh, they have uh, more time to look after their families. Mm -hmm. 
and it leads to the food security uh, because there is no money because of this thing was not been um, uh, mentioned and uh, most family they don't have anything to uh, put on the table mm -hmm. so we do the butter system example I did one butter system and uh, I have to share to another family mm -hmm. so that we can share uh, what is they are having now because they are not prepared everybody was not prepared mm -hmm. and mostly like in it okay we are doing solo salabaki they have been uh, planting uh, a lot of them they have been planting now uh, before so most of them they are just roaming around they don't care about what because they went to the sea catch fish they sell the fish and they can buy what they want but now is um, a different case altogether people have uh, been caring about themselves what is going on and how to look after their family mm -hmm. especially like uh, multiracial uh, in the other way they are the one they uh, planted their rice and they left it in a house to protect them in any disaster comes. Mm -hmm. So uh, mostly women are running here and there. Mm -hmm. And uh, like in another community, in other community, they, they use the, the suluka, you know, we tie with the suki. Mm -hmm. They put that to sell mm -hmm. so that they can get money. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Andy Wangani Tong, I understand you study in Suba. You're a year 13 student, but you had to come yes, home yeah. uh, because of COVID-19. Yes. Can you tell us and tell the viewers who are watching tonight, what are some of the ways for you as a student, as a young woman, um, you have coped and have responded to COVID-19 and its impact? Um, for me as a student, education is a main priority so as to how I coped with this pandemic um, we usually have a timetable at home where it starts from 8 to 12 and then 1 to 3 uh, we attempt to do it at a regular basis mm -hmm. so since the environment is different mm -hmm. you know a change of mindsets and there are people at home mm -hmm. so we try our best to um, to live uh, in an environment mm. which where we can ab enable ourselves to mm. learn so because it is hard from mm. a school environment mm. and then you staying at home mm. yeah so that's how I coped with this uh, thank you so we've heard of the different ways you've coped the different ways you've responded for you Jay uh, having time to just looking after yourself and doing the things that you haven't done um, in the past and for Andy Makitalena, taking care of the people within your neighborhood through the butter system. For you, Andy Wanganitonga is basically setting your priorities right and ensuring that you are spending time to do that even when you are not in school. Um, we will continue with the conversation in the next uh, segment. You are watching Transcend Oceania's uh, Just Peace Talanombure at COVID-19. Join us in the next segment after this break. Welcome to this final um, and last segment of this episode on women's innovation in the Northern Division. Perhaps to finish off the Talanoa and to wrap up the Talanoa because you've talked about a lot of things that a lot of people who are watching and viewing the show tonight can learn from. But perhaps you might like to talk about what are some lessons learned for you not only during COVID-19, but in the lives that you've lived, in the areas that you've lived, what are some of the lessons you've learned and what are some recommendations that you can put forward to bring about change? Uh, the importance of um, having quality time uh, and 
prioritizing what's more important to us as an individual. I've seen this uh, COVID-19 has bring this change um, into me and my communities. We are able to more focus on our individuals. Uh, I can say uh, self-care. It allows us time for us to to also reflect on our journey of as an individual with the different uh, challenges. Uh, with a, a recommendation um, for us personally with disabilities, like I shared earlier, it has brought a new ways uh, and a style of living our life differently. And it also uh, brings new recommendations uh, to the government to the service providers in terms of uh, providing um, accessible, uh, accessible, affordable and quality services. When I say this, I say meaning uh, accessible in the sense that the services are more accessible, will be accessible for persons with disabilities. Um, in other services, the service providers need to make it more easier for them to able to access their services. Uh, during uh, COVID-19 and others unpredictable uh, event eh? um, and uh, to also uh, affordable in a way that um, they're able to respond or support and if there's uh, charged to be charged in a very affordable price mm -hmm. um, the medicines and the hand sanitizers uh, the gloves that really prices were really going up so, uh, and lastly, uh, the quality of uh, service provided for uh, persons with disabilities and, and also for everyone mm. to be um, in, in, a, in a level that, that ensure that we are all um, being served in a manner that it fits us mm. all. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Jane. Adima Kitalena, what are some of the lessons learned for you? Uh, what are some of the recommendations moving forward? For me, a lesson learned in terms of crisis, including COVID-19, that um, uh, the family are coming together. Mostly the men, they left the family in the afternoon. They don't stay with their mother and the wife and the children. And uh, it's a good lesson to me that they come together, they talk, and they know each other. And. Um, uh, a lot of things has been um, uh, learned in the community that uh, um, they they help the family, the mother and the uh, the mother and the young girls, the men, to support the family. And uh, my recommendation for the in term of crisis, uh, the government should um, make awareness to the community and come close to the community, that each department, they should know each other. And also the community voice should be heard, should be heard. They should uh, know what really need from the community. That's my recommendation. Andy Wangani Tonga, um, what are some recommendations you have uh, for those young women like you who are still studying but lack access to resources and live in rural communities. Thank you. Um, having brought up from a rural area, it's not easy to live the, you know, in a rural area. So students have to have access to resources to enable them to study well and um, attain a quality, high quality of education. So um, in rural areas, since there are lack of network, the networks are not really good, so they have to travel 100 kilometers from rural areas to urban areas to, um, to receive the worksheets that the Ministry of Education have sent and uh, what teachers have uh, been told for them to do for children. So, yeah, that's... Thank you very much. Thank you very much to the three of you for joining the show tonight. You have, um, in your stories, talked about your experiences, uh, the priorities for you as a, a person living with disability and for you 
um, as, a, as a woman, as a woman leader. You've talked about the ways you have responded um, to COVID-19 and its uh, impacts. Uh, you've also shared about some of the challenges and barriers for you and you have talked about some of the lessons you've learned so far um, and the recommendations that you are putting forward. We thank you for joining us and for your willingness to be part of this um, uh, process. And thank you viewers for watching this episode tonight. As we conclude with Just Peace Talano Ambure at COVID-19, we are reminded once again the important to listen to each other and share these talking spaces. And here with us is Andi Wangani Tonga Masivue, the representative of youths and students here in the north, and Andi Makitalena, the president of the Nalemba Multiracial Women's Group, and Jaina Sila Sila, the president of the Northern Youth with Disability. As we continue to engage in this Just Peace Talano Ambure at COVID-19, please join us at the next episode.